on and then we go without further ado excited to chop it up with a special guest in the building so as we go i'm introducing do 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 introducing do 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 introducing 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 it's espn's and it's the one half of the three knock down rule podcast steve kim in the build dizzy what up steve go hey. good afternoon can you hear me yeah i can hear you indeed What's yeah up? lady chan I i'm glad to be with you one uh clarification i haven't been at espn for, for ages. about two for years months. yeah i'm actually just for doing months. some uh independent stuff i uh the, the three knockdown rule will be coming back at the beginning of the year on a new platform. Also, I do my weekly or bi-weekly column uh, on snack.com. Yeah. And then I also do uh, guest segments for Jason Whitlock on the Blaze Networks. So that's basically oh, what I'm up to at okay, this point. I think a lot of people also know you from the ESPN as well. So sometimes yeah. you have, to tie, you have to tie you in. But yeah, former ESPN. <laughs> yeah, shouts out to you. What's up, Steve? The first time we uh, actually spoke was on Twitter space. I haven't done one of them ever since, you know. <laughs> I haven't been on a Twitter. I, I, I go on Julius's and I rock out with Julius's Ring IQ, but I haven't done my own. So we And we had a good chop up there. And I've been meaning to ask you from then to come on. But, you know, it's just a run of play. Get this one on, that one on. And I'll, I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Steve to come on. And you've graciously, graciously uh, accepted. So I massively appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> So oh, no problem. By the way, it's a big weekend of fights. There's the, yeah, there's actually, you know, it's funny. Is I was actually, I, I finished my column early this week because it's Thanksgiving yeah. on uh, yeah. Thursday. There's actually two cards in the UK. There's uh, Zach Parker against John Ryder. Yep. And then you have Dillian White against Jermaine Franklin. I'm actually in interested in seeing how Dillian White looks. I know he's been out here in California the last, I think, month and a half. He has a new trainer and my good friend, Buddy McGirt. So I'm actually interested to see what does this version of the body snatcher look like? Um, I don't think, I'm wondering if we're going to see much of a difference, to be honest, because it's only one camp thus far. Uh, we may see subtle changes. But I mean, we're not going to really, uh, you ain't going to be able to change that, 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 that chin for the uppercut, is it? Let's have it right. Yeah, look, they, they chose Jermaine for a reason. Jermaine's been on Showbox a couple of times. I, I would say he's a relatively inexperienced, unproven prospect. Right. Uh, Dillian, to me, I look, I've always thought a little bit more highly of Dillian than most Americans. I thought for a stretch there of about five years, he had a pretty good heavyweight resume. Yeah, he does. I, I never understood why his handlers never pressed the WBA on that number one position. I thought there was a lot of politics. I thought this was a favor towards Deontay Wilder and the PBC. But as a fighter, after a year or two, you got to raise your hand alongside your handlers and say, guys, you have to make us the mandatory. I thought to a certain degree he died on the vine waiting for that long-awaited title shot. Yeah, with that, with the whole WBC debacle, that was, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure why he didn't go. Uh, why Eddie didn't get him into some kind of position to uh, go for other sanctioning bodies. I'm not sure why, but hey ho, he 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 had his chance. Um, he was saying now that he um, I think he uh, you could tell now that he said it, but we don't like excuses. But he did have an injury going into that Tyson Fury uh fight. Um, he had I think a foot injury, so um. But I mean, what would you what would you have done in that instance? Because it kind of like dragged on. He finally got his chance, and then um, you get an injury. Would you have just pushed that back? But you know, Lady Chen, it's easy to that. say that. Here's the issue. First of all, if you're Dillian White, that title shot was at least two or three years overdue, right? Yeah. 
time waits for no man. I, I mean, the sands of time are always running on a boxer's career. These dates are very difficult to come by. You don't fight every month anymore. You fight every six, seven, eight months at the world-class level. Also, keep this in mind, Lady Chan, this is a business. And once that fight went to a purse bid, and so now it became a game of which network would get it, and there was a lot of pressure on both sides to win that fight. And with the amount of money that was put up and the percentage that Dillian White got, you know what? He could have had a broken leg, and I think he would have gotten in there. I mean, that's just the truth. Because let's just yeah. face it. If it was a regular payday, if he was facing Jermaine Franklin for that type of money he's getting this weekend, you probably pull yourself out. But when you're getting that type of money, which I'm assuming for him or most people like you or me is yeah. life-changing money, uh, you you could be almost dead. You will find a way inside that ring. That's the reality. Because let's say, because you know the way Tyson Fury is. He's very mercurial. He's very flighty. So if you cancel a date on him, then yeah. you're not actually guaranteed he ever reschedules with you. Yeah. That's yeah. the reality. He, he'll stand you up for the prom. Yeah. He will. Yeah. He, 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 won't, he won't be escorting you definitely to that prom, Tyson Fury. So um, we're going for the month of this, uh, of for the last uh, for the last month of fights that have happened and like to like also pick your brain on uh, things like, well, um, we may as well start with the the Twilight Zone one. <laughs> this, 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 this Errol Spence and Bud Crawford. I feel like uh, I'm playing fantasy, fantasy matchups. What's your take on this? Who's ducked, if anybody? Um, is Al Heyman to blame? Uh, is Terence Crawford to blame? Who is to blame? You know, it's never just somebody it's always everybody and I, i've said this for a while when you create a system a current marketplace where everybody is overpaid based on which promoter you with and you want to create exclusive contract for a network everybody involved from pbc errol spence terence crawford and then what was top rank and that deal ran out one year ago they were both actually overpaid. And I would say this on various shows, and I also tweeted it. Based on what both fighters were getting at that point and then what they would demand to face one another, I would ask people, do you think that pay-per-view does even a half million buys on Twitter? Most people would say no. And I said, then we have a real problem because the financial demands of both fighters cannot be met. Now, this is going to surprise people. But I'm going to defend Al Heyman here a little bit, even though he helped create this very flawed marketplace and system. Al Heyman, like any other businessman, he has a right to go into a business to not lose money. And I think he looked at the numbers saying, well, wait a minute. If both guys are demanding X, Y, and Z, I can't make money. And I've already lost enough of it. So I always thought that this was a little bit problematic in a sense that as good as Crawford and Spence were, they were not that Oscar De La Hoya, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, Saul, Cowell, uh, Saul Alvarez level pay-per-view draw that could actually draw the numbers to satisfy both parties. So I was not completely stunned that this thing fell apart because I've always been a little bit skeptical of whether this fight could be made from an economic perspective. I, I think it 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 could with this how it's been. I think it could do five hundred thou. I think it could at this point. I think it could. Yeah. I'm not saying anymore. Yeah, you know, I think it could. You know what though? I'm only going by track record because what you've done in the past will tell me what you can do in the present, and you do have to go by projections. Now, yeah. could could have both of them as a combination together on a marquee have done greater numbers? than they've done previously? Absolutely. Because sometimes in pay-per-view, two plus two can equal seven. I've been told that by people that have done that for years, right? The problem is, I, I think this thing became about control. But also, Lady Chan, let's take a look at the reality. Let's say they would have fought this past November 19th, which is actually about, what, two, three days ago. Right. The reality is, Terrence Crawford had not fought for a year, so no one had really seen him. And, and you have to understand in America, boxing is not nearly as popular as it is in your part of the uh, world. 
I mean, I see some of your fights on the Zone or ESPN Plus that draw ten to fifteen thousand, and I say to myself, "Wow, that's amazing!" Because in the U.S., that would be held in a hotel ballroom in front of two thousand people. That's the reality because we have the National Football League, we have NBA basketball, we have Major League Baseball, we have college sports. Boxing is higher up on the pecking order. The other issue is that Errol Spence has really not fought all that much. So we're talking about a niche sport, and no matter how good both of these guys are, they have look at their records, Lady Chan, the last three, four years, and I know there was a pandemic, they had not fought that much. They hadn't really built much of a profile with the general casual audience. And that's the audience you have to reach to really attain certain pay-per-view numbers. Right. Well, I mean, so let's look at it. We've had um, Errol Spence with Mikey Garcia. He did about 360. This this leads me to know that, you know, Mikey got those are really Mikey Garcia's fan base. Because since then, every uh, PPV that Errol Spence has done, it's it has declined. I think the lowest he yes. About 240. Uh, he stands at about 240. And Terence Crawford stands at about 160. But what I would like to say on Terence Crawford's behalf is that he was stuck on ESPN+. Plus. And there's a lot of people that don't know how to work that app. Or that app is ha has more of a limited reach. I think if Bob would have just put him on regular ESPN, just uh, for the Sean Porter fight, that would have did way more numbers than it did. And then I, that's why I could get a combined maybe projection of mm, 240, 240, maybe, yeah, maybe 480, maybe yeah, 5. Yeah, you know, Lady Chen, that Porter fight last year was interesting. You have to understand what took place. That went to a purse bid because top rank got the WBO to, ma to make that a mandatory. So that ended up in a situation where if they could not come to a deal, they'd go to a purse bid. So, Bob Arum, I think, made one last play to try to keep Terrence Crawford in a long-term deal or to show him that, hey, we're trying to do everything we can to make fights that really matter. They ended up putting up $10 million for that fight. Yeah. Crawford, from my understanding, ended up with six to six and a half million, which was really exorbitant based on the pay-per-view buys that actually derived. And Crawford, uh, the opponent at that point, Porter, he got about four million. Yeah. Well, in a situation like that, you have to go pay-per-view even at a loss because currently there are no networks putting up that much of a license fee. Generally, if a fight costs more than $5 million, yeah, that means the fight has to go on pay-per-view, unfortunately. And I, I look, there's a lot of talk of certain fights. Well, if you really want to blow it up, a network should put it on an eight, or no, a terrestrial network. You know, in theory, that's yeah. absolutely correct. But in reality, the uh, U.S. networks will pay hundreds of millions for a package of National Football League games, certain bowl games in the college level. They won't do it for boxing. Basically, if a fight, like I said, at a certain point, you reach a stage where that almost has to be on pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah, of oh, course, but... Uh, but, but we can see that these models, these pay-per-view models are not working. When they're not, they're, they're definitely not working. I mean, you've had the Ortiz and Charles, Ortiz, Charles Martin, barely breaking, <laughs> barely breaking well, anything. Lady Chan, I have a theory and I've talked to people within the industry. They are alarmed because there used to be a time where you could rely on pay-per-view to at least do a certain amount of buys. But with modern technology, it's actually made piracy and stealing it, for lack of a better term, much easier. There used to be a time I grew up, you had to get a thing called a black box, which is like a right. special cable. I never saw one, but it was like this mystical thing, like, wow, you've seen a black box? And I'm like, whew. I'm not, a, I, I'm like, it was like a Hope Diamond? Is that like the Celtic Sea Scrolls? Do they really exist? I mean, one day I probably saw Bigfoot with a black box going to watch the fights, right? I mean, so... Now, all you really need is a computer, and you go on the Twitter or any social media site, and you say, anyone got a link? And there's 58 ways to watch the fight. And you know what's funny, Lady mm -hmm. Chan? These streams are now crystal clear. The days of Justin TV, where it looks like you're looking through an aquarium, and you got 18 viruses that shut down your computer in three days. Them days is over. I mean, that's, it's clear. So and that, and then if you have a little bit of patience or discipline, 
Right. It doesn't last long, but you could go on YouTube and there are copies of the fight. Now they get shut down eventually, but yeah. they are there for a quick moment. So they it's are. Easy. I have a theory. I think more people are watching fights now more than ever, but fewer of them are now paying hey. for it. Yes. And that's yeah. the difference. Okay. So with, with Crawford, um, um, now moving on to fight David Avenesian. We're seeing a lot of comments coming from your side of the pond. Oh, he's a bum, David Avenesian. He's nobody. He's a journeyman. I don't know. I don't think people understand the correct definition of a journeyman, but hey, like I can't be bothered to take them back to school because these people, some of them are older than me at the end of the day. And it's just like, really? So what are your thoughts on him fighting David Avenesian and then now Errol Spence, Errol Spence fighting um, Thurman, Keith Thurman? Yeah, look, Avanesian is a solid welterweight contender. I just think when, if you take a look at, at the context of how this happened and why it happened, it's a letdown. I can see and certainly understand the fans' frustration. But Avanesian, if you look at the ratings of all the major sanctioning bodies, his name is in there. Ring Magazine had him in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So so by that standard, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call him a bum. You could say it's a letdown. It's a fight that you wouldn't pay for. It's a fight... That's that's the difference. There's a big difference between that right. and being AKA a yeah. tomato can. I don't know how many people are going to actually pay for it on this new. I'll be honest, Lady Chan. About a month ago, I'm kind of hanging out, and it's about nine o'clock my time. I live in LA, yeah. and I get this, and I get this email. It's an announcement, and and B L A K Prime, and I'm like, B L what? Black Lives Matter? No, it was like B L A K Prime. I'm kind of looking at it, and it it said Terrence Cross. <laughs> like what? I thought it was a joke, and then I saw some other people tweeting about it. Mike Coppinger actually wrote the story and broke it. So I said, okay, I guess it's legit. Lady Chen, I had never heard of this app. I had never heard of it. I've never seen it. I've never used it. I've never downloaded it. Um, look, this, this is the irony. This is the type of fight that Terrence Crawford probably would have had the last three years under his top rank deal. And people would have absolutely killed that fight for being on ESPN and not being another welterweight. Now on the flip side, I find this very interesting. We should have known the writing was on the wall when the WBC inserted Thurman as the number one contender. Yeah. We that do. looks like they're in business there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the WPBC, okay? <laughs> Thurman, this is just a fact. I don't know how much Thurman has left. I actually like Keith. He's a quirky character. Mm -hmm. But basically, in the last, what, three, four years, he has one win. Yeah. What win? Over <laughs> Mario Barrios. Points a, decision. Yeah, a blown-up junior welterweight. Yeah. How the WBC ranks him over guys like Virgil Ortiz and certainly a guy that I like, Jerron Boots Ennis or Imanistani Onis, is baffling to me. Now the WBA has basically ruled, hey, we're going to sanction that fight. You kind of knew. You, you knew what direction this was going. Errol Spence had told us for four years, I am not fighting Keith Thurman. I'm my own boss. I'm right. not doing it. Guess right. what? We found out two things. You're not your own boss, and you're going to be fighting Keith Thurman. And you're going to be fighting Keith Thurman, yeah. even though you said for the last 10 years that you would never fight Keith Thurman. So clearly you're not your own boss. Wait, yeah. but do, 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 do these guys need each other? Who yeah, I, to a certain degree, it? they do. I mean, though, could you... I for, mean, for, to keep they, their legacy alive. I mean, like, if, if, if they care about legacy and stuff like that, yes. Because yeah. could you imagine a, a boxing history... If Ray Leonard and Hearns had never fought. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine if Leonard Hearns, Hagler, Duran never fought? Yeah. The, the, could you imagine if Marco Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales, Juan Manuel Marquez, and Manny Pacquiao decided, you know, we can all make our own money. Look, bottom line yeah. is this. With Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, the livings that they have made in this yeah. very tough sport, we don't have to start them a GoFundMe account. They're good yeah. financially. Okay, no, they're yeah. they're yeah. part of the one percent. Okay, yeah. Yeah. but I'm not in this to be their bookkeeper. Okay, I am in this as a boxing fan. Theoretically, it's a big miss. There are certain fights in the history of boxing, like Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, that never happened. 
And this will be right up there with it. It's a huge letdown. Um, I'm actually heartened by the fact that maybe Tank Davis will actually fight Ryan Garcia. This is what keeps the fight alive. This is what this is the thing, though, Lady Chen. I wrote about this a while ago. If you go yeah. back to Hearns Leonard in 1981, yeah. it's one of the first super fights that I remember. I was much, yeah. much younger, right? As a kid. Yeah. They were 23 and 25. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right yeah. now, Errol Spence and um, 32 and 35. <laughs> yeah, they're a decade older. To put this into perspective, how much this changed. When Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad fought, they were each 26 years old. Look, here's the issue with this fight. And if you talk about the sanctioning bodies and what they're ruling, and I, and I talked about it a few days ago on my last yeah. column. Yeah. When it, um, Terrence Crawford took on Sean Porter, that in essence became his WBO mandatory obligation. The yeah. WBO said, okay, from November 20th of 2020, now you have 18 months till your next mandatory is due. So if right. you look at the timing, sometime next May, and I, let's assume he beats Abanessian and he wants yeah. to stay at 47. Yeah. Now, this is not a bad fight. I, I actually like this. Yeah. Guess what? The number one contender would be Virgil Ortiz. Now, yeah. I, look, I'm not so sure. Where, I've been told by, by, by various people, they think Spence Crawford is dead for good. It'll never happen. Uh, yeah, I know. I, saw, I know. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so now I'm, I'm just wondering, are we going to at least get fights like Ortiz Crawford and Boots Ennis or Stani Onis against Spence? Or will Spence just simply move up to 54? That's the I, question I, that I have. See, if... I think that it's going to be a, a standoff who goes up first. Because if Spence vacates his belt, he knows that Terence Crawford could just collect them. Yes. And then he, he reaches his goal of being undisputed. Vice versa for, 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 for um, Bud. Bud lets go of his WBO belt. Spence, collect, <clears throat> Spence collects that. Becomes undisputed, then probably vacates yeah. and moves up. So I think we're going to see uh, an okay corral. Oh, look, I would love for Terrence Crawford, who, by the way, here's the thing. Errol Spence has, be has began his career at 47, which is now a full decade into it, and right. has stayed at 47. Right. Bud began his career as a 135-pounder. I would assume it's probably killing Errol to keep this weight that much longer so if i'm bud who is a very stubborn guy trust me i would like to plant my flag and i and i tell i would tell er, errol i ain't leaving yes. i am not leaving 47 yeah so then just he has a fight. Fight. he so his his mando is uh an ortiz but, that's a but, good fight by the way that's a great that's an epic fight who you would you have saying? winning uh i look here's here's the issue errol Errol and Bud are now both going towards the autumns of their career. I'm not saying they're old, but they're not necessarily young. And the question is, how much longer is their physical apex, which they've been at for the last three, four years? Yeah. But time waits for no man. It really doesn't. No, it now, no, I would no. like to actually see, see. I think they did a smart thing, though. I actually spoke to someone in Bud's camp. They were absolutely convinced that Heyman and Spence were trying to age and rust them out by backing up this fight. And then Crawford said, no, 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 I'm going to fight this year. You're not getting me on a 14, 15-month layoff. Yeah. I actually think they did a good thing here. So let's say against Avanesian on December 10th, it still looks like vintage Bud Crawford. Yeah. I, at that point, I think, you know what? He's still the best, maybe the best boxer in the world pound for pound. And yeah. I don't know if Virgil Ortiz could handle that overall slickness and just how tough Terrence Crawford is. I'm on the record, Lady Chan. My favorite welterweight, and I think the guy that's going to dominate boxing, the next pound for pound king, um, Boots Ennis. I'm a big fan of Boots. Yeah, big I fan. I can see it. We just need to see him in a step up fight. Yeah. Uh, um. And um, do you think he'll get that? Because he's signed to. He's with Showtime, isn't he? Yeah, he's with Showtime. He's not formally a PBC guy. One of the issues with Boots, he's going to be a guy that unless 
He is absolutely a mandated challenger or a sanctioning body says you have to fight him or you lose your belt. No one's going to voluntarily literally fight him. That's just the reality of it. And I know, like, I guess Rashidi Ellis turned him down. Yeah. Uh, and now Bozy Ennis, his father, who I know for years, has said that Keith Thurman only wanted $10 million to face him. That sounds pretty reasonable, right? So anyway, yeah. So he's going to have to be one of these guys. It's going to have to go through that process of going through elimination bouts and eventually becoming a mandatory. But you're right. I just, the last thing that we need to see on Boots is how does he catch against a really good puncher? That's the last frontier in terms of finding out about him. <laughs> About him, yeah, that's what I need to see to establish. Oh God, the 147 division is in a mess. So we'll go to the next messy show. Fight!